I was... Wait, wait. Top right. Let's see a little yellow. There you go. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name's Sean. I'm an admissions counselor here at the university, and I want to welcome all of you to our pre-vet hangout. Um, we're, of course, talking to some students who are looking at the university. I have a few people here I'd like to introduce. First is Dr. Linda Peck. Hi there. Um, and then we also have a student. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kat Babros. I'm a senior pre-vet student here. Excellent. And um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the admissions process before we get started. Um, obviously, we want you to start the admissions process with an application. You can actually apply three different ways. You can apply online. You can apply via the common application. Or, of course, we can send you a paper application. So any of those three ways, it is free to apply no matter how you apply. So any of those are free. Uh, we do require you to write an essay. So you have to write some kind of an essay. It has to be more than, hi, my name's Sally. I want to apply to Finley. That's not quite enough. Uh, we require about 200 to 500 words, somewhere in that, in that, in that range. Uh, once you get your application, I will need three items. I will need your high school transcripts, a letter of recommendation, and your ACT or SAT test scores. Once we get those items, obviously we can look at you for acceptance. Our average student has about a 3.5 GPA and around a 24 on the ACT. We do look at all students, though, so I encourage you to get an application coming our way. Another very important piece of the application process is actually visiting campus. I know on the 21st of March, that's a Friday, we actually are having one of our pre-vet equestrian visit days. That would be an awesome opportunity to come and check out our campus, see our facilities. I know you're going to get to hear a lot about the facilities. They're absolutely amazing. So we encourage you to come and check them out. Um, obviously, you can also come and visit at any time. We have visits every day through the week, Monday through Friday. And we also have Saturday visit dates, but the Saturday visit dates we may not be able to get you out to the barns. Yeah. So try to come through the week if you possibly can. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our proctor, um, who's Amy. We also, of course, want you to tweet your questions. We're obviously live. Tweet your questions to the Twitter handle, at ufinley and uh, hashtag AskUF. So tweet your questions to us and we'll get them answered. Thank you. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and take over now. So we're going to kind of scoot over so that we're centered here. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank all of you for, for joining us tonight. Um, and I hope that you have some good questions. Um, because if you don't, we're just going to keep on talking. So <laughs> please send questions. Um, really, um, University of Finley is a great school, um, and I think that um, because we are a smaller liberal arts school in, in Northwest Ohio, not a lot of people necessarily are familiar with us, um, and they certainly don't realize that we have a premier pre-vet program that is known all over the country. Um, we've had students accepted to 29 out of 30 veterinary schools. I used to be able to say 28 out of 28, but unfortunately they came up with two new schools. And so we haven't had one accepted to Midwestern University in Arizona. Um, but 29 out of 30, I, I think that's still pretty good. Um, we've had two accepted to schools in Canada. We've had um, students accepted to two Caribbean schools and several in um, Europe. So we have a really, really good track record. And, and the reason we have a good track record is really threefold. Number one, um, we go ahead and have an academic program that is not only competitive and what the vet schools want, but our students are very successful once they get into professional school. And I hear that time and time again from the kids who are in school, um, from admissions directors, that we do a very, very good job of preparing um, students for professional school or for graduate school for that matter because we have a lot of students that will get accepted to graduate programs also. Um, so we have a very competitive academic program. We have very good advising. We're probably one of the few programs that have actual practicing veterinarians as um, primary advisors. Um, <clears throat> and so actually in the program, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to forgive me, um, we actually have um, Dr. Kearns, myself, um, Dr. Brandon Forshee, um, Dr. Rick, Richard Henninger, and Dr. Greg Haas that are, we have five veterinarians who are on the staff. And, and that's quite a lot of exposure to different um, viewpoints, different types of medicine. So you really go ahead and, and get great experience in that way. Um, and so we have really, really good 
um, advising. And then lastly, of course, is the um, hands-on experience that we afford our students, um, which there's a component of that in every year. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce again my student who um, is, um, it's actually Katarina, but I always call her Kat. I think everybody does. Um, Davros, and she's a senior here at the University of Finley. She is a dual biology, animal science, um, pre-vet strand um, student with a chemistry minor. She's been accepted to um, Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine for next year and to Illinois, um, University of Illinois College of Veterinary Medicine. And I think she's going to Kansas, I think. <laughs> so um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to her because how better to hear about our hands-on from somebody who does it. Kat? Okay, so starting our freshman year, we go out to the Richard C. Beckett Animal Science Farm that is just, how far away is it from campus? I would say it's probably not any more than maybe mm, three, four miles. Yeah, now. it's definitely drivable, and the university provides vans, so if you don't have a car your mm -hmm. freshman year, you can take the vans out there for your classes. So the first um, class that I took out there was practical animal handling, uh, food animal handling, and we started out learning about um, just basic anatomy of ruminants and food animals, and for this class we were in the barn for uh, Monday and Wednesday for an hour, and then we had lectures on Fridays that were an hour too. And it's a typical course, we had quizzes and tests, but when we were in the barn, um, we learned how to castrate piglets and lambs and calves, mm -hmm. and we learned how to trim hooves on the ewes and the goats. Um, we did ear tagging for the calves and the goats and the lambs, and then we did ear notching for piglets, and so we also learned what the different notches mean and how you identify piglets by those notches. And it, I think probably it, it's fair to say that one of the things that we do is to track, we go ahead and emphasize both safety and restraint yeah. and physical exams. Yeah. Um, we learn how to safely halter calves and tie them so that they're restrained, but they're also not going to injure themselves if they start fighting against the knot. And we learned how to reef a cow, which is really fun. Um, it's a way you tie a rope around a cow and pull the rope, and they fall over and are completely restrained. Um, and I really and it doesn't hurt the cow. Yeah, it doesn't hurt the cow. Uh, I really liked that class because I'm from uh, Cleveland, and I had never seen large animals before in my life outside the zoo. <laughs> and so it was really nice for a teacher to do one-on-one -on -one time with me and teach me how to safely maneuver on these animals and treat them so that they were safe and I was safe. And then the second course in our practical animal handling classes is equine animal handling, which was also very good for me because I was a little scared of horses when I first came here. And um, in that course, a big part of it was learning how to safely maneuver around the horses and handle them so you don't get kicked or bitten or anything. And there's a lot of teacher assistants that are also students um, in these classes. So if, even if Dr. Kearns or Dr. Forshee can't be with you at that moment, a TA will be with you, so you can always get your questions answered. And in equine animal handling, it was the same thing. We were in the barns twice a week and then in lecture once a week. Mm -hmm. And we learned how to age horses based on looking at their teeth and the grinding patterns. And we learned basic anatomy and physiology. And then we learned how to give injections and draw blood. And we also learned about um, common lameness problems and the issues those can cause later in life for the horses. And that was really fun because the teacher, Dr. Kearns, would actually take horses out of stalls and walk them down the aisle. And we would have to try to determine what kind of uh, lameness problem that horse had and then say what problem it would cause later in life and that was a quiz. And so it was nice to be able to have quizzes that weren't just pen and paper. They were looking at real problems like you would if you were a veterinarian. So, you know, you think about it. Something as simple as that we do every day as veterinarians when we're working on equine or, and horses is just a fact of learning how to safely pick up a horse's hoof um, because that's 
not something, you know, you don't go ahead and say, okay, horse, pick up your foot, and they hand it to you. Um, and sometimes if they don't want to give it to you, there's some tricks that you can use that you can very safely, you know, get the horse's hoof, know how to hold it um, so they don't go ahead and, and fight it or anything. And, and those are the kind of things that we teach you in our program. And I have to tell you that as a veterinarian, and of and of course having been through professional school, they don't have time to teach you a lot of those types of very basic skills. Um, and I will go ahead and also say that um, I have students who come in and say, well I have a lot of course experience so I don't need to take that one. Believe me, at the extent that Dr. Kern throws information at you, you will still learn a bunch. I guarantee it. So um, it's a very, very good um, set of courses. Now, um, Kat, how do you, since you're a senior, how could you go ahead and stay active in things out at the barn um, as far as in junior, in your junior or senior year? Yeah, so there's two different kinds of TAs we have out at the barn. The first kind of TA uh, works with Dr. Kearns and Dr. Corshi in the animal handling courses. And those jobs are competitive. You have to have a 3.5 and get an A in both animal handling courses to be considered for one of those jobs. And I think those TAs work 10 to 15 hours a week. And they're in the barn um, with the freshman students when they're in class. And then they grade the quizzes when we take the freshmen take quizzes. And there's another kind of TA um, that if you watched last week, Ben is one of those TAs. And they help with the feedings that you have to do when you're a sophomore. So in your sophomore year, you take uh, animal reproduction and animal nutrition, both of which are very important classes that vet schools like to see during our curriculum. And those TAs are out the barns when the reproduction and nutrition students are out there doing their feedings. And as one of those students, you have to go either in the morning or in the evening once a week and feed out all the animals. And you're in a group, so you don't have to do it all by yourself. Um, and that's a really nice experience because it teaches you some of the management behind uh, one of maintaining one of these large facilities with different species of animals. And it also also teaches you, um, you know, the different kind of grains that some show cattle need instead of the nursing mother cows and things like that. Um, so, and then as a junior and a senior, you can have those jobs forever as long as you want. And there's also research opportunities out at the barn. Dr. Whitaker is very interested in swine reproduction. So I know he has quite a few students help him on that project. Yeah, he does. And um, one of my classmates is doing a senior capstone project about um, possible zoonotic diseases out at the barn. And so it's really up to you if you want to stick around and work out there, do research out there. And as students, we're more than welcome to go out to the barns whenever we want. If you just want to relax and pet some animals for a couple hours, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I've definitely done that a couple of times. You want to tell the guys what um, type of students, or what type of students, <laughs> what type of animals we have oh, actually yeah, out sure. in the animal science building. So, in the Animal Science Barn, we have ewes who um, farrow every semester, so we have lots of piglets, which is very fun. And then we also have goats, sheep. We have a herd of lowlander Angus cattle. We get um, dairy steers that we call bucket calves. And um, so those we learn, we actually get to dehorn those when they're old enough, which is very interesting. And then we also have some llamas and alpacas now and a mini donkey and a mini horse, and we had a mini mule for a while. <laughs> yeah, we actually went ahead and, and bred our miniature horse and um, the miniature donkey and came up with a miniature mule. And <clears throat> he was just as cute as could be. The problem is, is that because he was so cute, everybody spoiled him rotten, and he was <laughs> rotten as far as his behavior. So. Um, he went and went to a <clears throat> really good owner who um, we hope that he figured out what type of animal he was getting because he was pretty spoiled. But on the other hand, um, you know, we have the kids out at the barns a lot 
um, during that um, sophomore year, but and we encourage them to go out in the junior and senior year. Because the big thing is in veterinary medicine, before you can recognize abnormal, you have to know normal. You have to know the normal behavior of various species, um, how they behave, um, what behavior might be normal in, say, a hog would not be necessarily normal in a cow. So, you know, you have to go ahead and be familiar with that. The other thing that happens, and, and I can attest to this um, the other day, that if you're out at the barn, a lot of times things happen that you get to help with. I was taking one of our alumni who just graduated or was graduating from Iowa State College of Veterinary Medicine, and she had not seen the barn because it was just being built when she went off to vet school. And so I was taking her through the barn, and we're going through the aisles, and we're talking about the animals, and we're looking, and, <clears throat> and I look over, and there's one of the cows who's in labor getting ready to have a calf. And I went ahead and, and uh, told a couple of the students who were feeding on the other end of the barn, I said, hey, did you guys know about that cow that is in labor right now? Does Dr. Kearns or Dr. Forshee know that? And they said, no, but we'll be sure and tell them. And so by the time that Dr. Forshee got there, the calf was on the ground because the cow wasn't ha necessarily having any problems. But, you know, those kids who were out there at that moment, they got a chance to help with the delivery of that calf and, and to see what type of treatment we do with a calf um, as soon as it's born, and so, you know, you just can't beat that type of first-hand yeah. experience. And as a junior and a senior, we also have to take one uh, animal science production class for a major, and so I chose to take swine production because I really like the professor, and I didn't know much about swine, and so we also got to go into the barn for that class, and what was nice about what's nice about those courses is there are classrooms. There's two classrooms in the animal science facility, and so we would talk about something in class, and then we'd be standing room sows two seconds later, learning and looking at what we had just learned. And um, we got to play some fun games in that class. Like there's two pens of sows, and Dr. Whitaker labeled them the sows one through four. And the team that could get the sows into the other pen in order the fastest won bonus points. <laughs> so, you know, you had to, like, apply the things you learn in class about handling pigs and maneuvering them safely and so they don't get spooked. Um, we, had, we got to apply it to real pigs. And I'm sure that, that one of the things he taught you is that you don't stand with your legs apart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because otherwise you'll be riding one ride, backwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I can't um, encourage you enough, if you do have questions, to please go ahead and, and just jump right in because um, we have two of our really great um, marketing and admissions people here to go ahead and to answer your, tell us what your question is and, and we'll be more than happy to go ahead and answer it. Um, so since we're kind of um, waiting for questions. We'll go ahead and let me talk to you a little bit about the curriculum as far as the um, Uni University of Finley's Animal Science Program. The Animal Science major has three strands. We have a production strand, we have a science strand which is really for students that want to go on to say to get their masters in re re Reproductive physiology, talk about <laughs> reproductive physiology or nutrition or um, dairy science or or um, beef production or, or just whatever the case may be, um, and then we have of course the animal science pre vet strand. Um, the cores core classes that everyone takes is going to be introduction to animal science, um, animal nutrition, animal reproduction. Um, there also is a um, breeding and genetics, which is a, a hands-on, more pra more application type of breeding class. Or there is biology 310, which is um, genetics. Now that is a molecular genetics, and for the kids who are really wanting to go on to professional school, that's the genetics that they really should go ahead and be taking. Um, and then after that, we have a senior seminar that all students take. And during that senior seminar, we go ahead and um, we help students look, make sure that you know how to write a resume, how to go ahead and to do an interview. Um, we talk about um, 
how to go ahead and what job opportunities are in your particular field. Um, we even went so far as to bring in a finance guy to talk about budgeting um, and how to go ahead and um, look at student loans and, and in order to try to go ahead and to make sure you have the skills that when you graduate that you're going to be successful and, and go on. Um, from there, each strand has their own set of particular courses. The um, production strand, as you would guess, has some business classes like business communications, marketing, um, accounting, um, and then there is um, some general livestock like courses like meat production. Um, I'm, I'm missing something. Oh, and, and um, there are some of the um, management classes as far as barn management. Um, in the um, science strand, which is for graduate school, um, that pretty much is that you need to go ahead and take um, inorganic chemistry 1 and 2 and then organic chemistry 1 and 2. That's going to go ahead and be their primary core. And then the pre-vets are going to go ahead and be taking a lot more science classes um, and so there is that is the largest strand. Now everybody goes ahead and takes the elective core, and the elective core is where you can go ahead and, and kind of look at whatever area that you're interested in. We have classes in small animal medicine, large animal medicine, uh, food animal medicine. Um, we have uh, various productions. We have equine preventive medicine. We have besides the nutrition and repro that is in your core classes, we have advanced nutrition and advanced repros for uh, various species. Um, there is just a, there's actually even equestrian classes that are there because one of the things that some of our students do is that they will be a dual major between equestrian studies and animal science. Now that will keep you really busy. But on the other hand, it certainly can be done, and I've got some really, really good students in professional school yeah. right now that were dual majors. So in order to try to help you, we go ahead and allow you to combine some of those classes, and so that makes it a lot easier to get everything done. Certainly kids can get two majors done in four years the way that they're, the way that they're um, it constructed. And then lastly, we, we just have the general education core that's common for all students at the university. We do have one question. Justin Schwartz is asking, I'm actually looking more toward becoming a biology major, but is it possible to take a few pre-vet classes such as the animal handling, intro to veterinary medicine, or animal nutrition, etc.? Well, um, Justin, um, thanks for your question. Certainly, I will tell you first that the majority of my students are biology and animal science pre-vet majors, just like Kat is here. Um, and you can do that. Um, however, as soon as you go into some of the barn classes, there's going to go ahead and be a higher tuition rate that you're paying because of the cost of maintaining the animals out of the barn. But certainly we do not necessarily limit those classes to animal science majors. Um, however, the vast majority of students are that. I guess that what we would want to do is sit down with you and talk to you about what your professional aims are and what your goals are and, and what you're thinking about and seeing if we can go ahead and help plan an academic program that really is suited for whatever you were thinking about. So I hope that that went ahead and asked your question. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, Justin, thank you again. And, and like I said, one of those, if you went ahead and would visit the university, you get a chance to see not only the um, animal science facilities, but our biology facility is awesome. just yeah, awesome. That's about the best yeah. way of describing it. We have brand new labs. We're in, we're, biology is housed primarily in the Davis Street edition, and we have two floors where we have labs for botany, for microbiology. We have two huge anatomy lab, anatomy and physiology labs. Um, we have the um, molecular genetics lab. We uh, the kids 
actually in a lot of their research classes, but also in genetics, they're doing um, uh, PCR and chromatography, and you know they're doing some techniques that, to be quite honest, I read about when I was in veterinary school, but we didn't get a chance to do it. My students are doing the, pr the procedures, and I think it's just so cool. And a lot of times, um, I have a research project that I'm supervising right now with Dr. Wooten, and there we're actually taking clinical cases of Khaleesi virus in felines from area veterinary clinics and we are testing those cats that look like they possibly could be positive and we're running PCR on them to actually come up with a uh, test to see if they are infected with the Khaleesi virus because that is not a test that routinely they test for in veterinary medicine. It's very expensive and believe me, they were really happy that we were willing to go ahead and do that for them. But it's a great research project that the kids have been doing now for two years and so um, you know they really get a chance to do some great things. So I'm glad to hear that you're interested in biology um, but I can tell you that you really do need to come for a visit and see our labs, talk to some of the biology faculty, and I think that you know, you, you'll be impressed. Is there anything you want to go ahead and say about that, Ted? Because obviously with yeah. you being a biology major. Yeah. Um, so double majoring in biology and pre-vet is actually pretty easy. There's only like three mm -hmm. extra classes we have yep. to take to get a biology major. And then we also get an automatic chemistry major or minor with those two majors. So it's a nice resume builder. And um, the, bio the new biology building wasn't built when I first started going here, but I'm really glad they did build it because it's really, really nice. I actually have every single one of my classes in that one building this semester, which is awesome because I don't have to walk all over campus. And um, one of the really nice things that I just found out about this year in the biology program is that um, I wanted to do research on microbial populations in aquariums because I like keeping aquariums and fish and stuff, and I just thought it would be interesting. And so I talked to one of the biology faculty members about maybe getting a research project going, and the University of Finley gave me a $500 mini grant to buy all these aquariums and fish and um, you know all the little biology tools I needed. And so another student and I have been doing this research all year, and we're going to go present it at three different conferences now, I think. So that's a really nice thing about the university is that they will fund whatever kind of research you want to do. Um, it doesn't have to be really, really scientific. I didn't think mine was going to be. Um, so whatever kind of research you're interested in, it's very easy to get a project going if you want to. Yeah, and you have to, you have to understand that you know, we want students to experience research and so therefore we're not asking anybody to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. However, the idea of planning a research project, carrying it out, looking at what results you have, analyzing that data, um, seeing if it supports your, um, your true hypothesis or your null hypothesis, in other words, did it, did it prove what you wanted or it, did, or it disproved, you know, what, whatever it did, um, and then writing it up, I mean, it's such a great career builder um, because um, you can use experience like that on your resume to go ahead and to apply to graduate school. Yeah. Certainly it's great with professional school um, interviews um, on the job market because it shows evidence of critical thinking, communication, being able to carry forth a project to its completion, working in a group, um, all of the things that even in the job market are extremely important. So, you know, being a um, institution our size, we're able to do that because you work with individual faculty that have their PhDs and we're the ones that supervise those types of projects and so you really get the best of both worlds. You get great facilities and yet you get the hands-on one-on-one that you may not get at other institutions. Yeah. And if you don't know what you're interested in but you just want to get research experience, all of the biology professors pretty much do research. There's one of my professors does cancer research. One of them loves to do research with um, fungus. Right now in the room where I have my fish housed, there's saltwater shrimp projects going on. There's salamander projects. 
some sort of little toad project. <laughs> um, and then there's projects out at the barn. I mean, there's pharmacy professors that you can get um, hooked up with and do mm -hmm. some pharmacy-related um, biology research studies. So if you don't know what you're interested in, there's tons of points where you can jump off from. Yeah, so it's it's it really... Um provides an interesting mix and we try to be interdisciplinary as much as possible for example you know um, there will be projects that carry over between biology and animal science um, there will go ahead and be projects between pharmacy and pre-vet and, and so on and so forth now one thing that we haven't mentioned um, very much about is that the university feels very very strongly toward experiential learning and with experiential learning what we mean is that you actually get to go out and do things that add to your learning and a lot of times it, it involves internships. Yeah. Um, the university has a internship project or inter internship office that is very very good at helping find in internships. We have a whole host of them that um, we have listed that you can apply for. However, we also go ahead and um, encourage students and help students learn how you can find an internship in something that you're interested in and then we'll go ahead and you know send you to the internship office and they'll kind of check it out to make sure that everything's legit and everything's fine and um, give you pointers on how to apply for it help you with your resume um, most of the time you're writing some type of a personal statement you know making sure that that is done well um, talking to you about who's the best people to go ahead and ask for recommendations, etc. So we've had some students do some great um, internships anywhere from you know internationally all the way to you know doing it at various zoos and aquariums um, you know and they really you really go ahead and get a chance. I, I've got students who do projects and internships in marine biology and I'll tell you the biggest body of water closest to Finlay is Lake Erie and <clears throat> even then it's not that close but on the other hand I have students who work you know have worked for zoos in North Carolina in Florida in California the Monterey Bay Aquarium for example um, uh, yeah <laughs> Kansas um, and also um, the uh, Nebraska Zoo. I mean, the, it's just amazing the number of internships that the students have. We have um, in Indiana, not very far from Finley, we have a um, wild um, big cat rescue program, and they have, you know, lions and tigers and forgive me, they don't have bears. Um, but on the other hand, you know, they actually have those cats there and they have procured them from all over the United States from people who well either couldn't keep them anymore maybe didn't know how to keep them anyway they're they're in a much much better place now and they are taken care of they take interns I've had a lot of interns that have worked there um, and so that's a great experience seeing these cats in as close in their natural environment as you can go ahead and get. We're very close to the wilds, which um, <clears throat> is a savanna like um, safari park that, that certainly takes a lot of students for internships. So we really have a great internship um, program that uh, um, if if you want to go ahead and you know find an internship in a particular area, we certainly do our best to help you find what in that. Yeah. I'll give you guys a little personal experience. So when I was a freshman, I really wanted to do an internship at a zoo because um, a senior had come into pre-vet club and talked about her internship at a zoo. So I went on the uh, Association of Zoos and Aquariums website that has a big internship listing, and I applied to I think 13 different zoos and got shut down from 11 of them for being too young. Um, and I had to get uh, letters of recommendation, and I'd only been at school for a semester, so I was really nervous about asking professors if they'd only known me for one semester. But all of my professors that I asked wrote one for me, and I just thought that was really touching because at a big university, those professors would never know your name after just one semester of being in class with them. And all of the professors that I asked knew at least something about me that they thought was good. Um, and so I thought that was awesome because, again, at a big university, you don't get that one-on-one -on -one experience like you do here. 
and professors won't know you as well after just a short period of time. Um, and then my sophomore year, after summer after my sophomore year, um, I had an internship at the Cleveland Clinic with the lab animal veterinarians, which was not a section of veterinary medicine I had ever known about. And I just remember Dr. Peck mentioning it and entered a pre-vet class <laughs> freshman year. Um, so I got that internship, which was really, really cool. And um, yeah, that was just a great experience. So whatever kind of internship you want to do, um, you just have to go out there and find what you think is interesting and find websites and postings about them because they're out there and Finley will definitely help you get them. And, and that's and that's absolutely the case. I think that at Finley sometimes you need to just um, say something to somebody and a lot of times we can make it happen. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing the projects and everything that my students um, will go ahead and do. Um, while we're talking about things that students do, one thing I do want to go ahead and mention is that we have a very strong um, academic support area for the university that can provide tutors in um, English composition, in math, um, in chemistry, and then if you're if you're having trouble in a subject that they don't have a particular tutor, you know, you go ahead and make a request. The um, academic support area gets a hold of the professors in that area to recommend students who could tutor, and then they actually hire special tutors. Um, and yeah, I don't know of too many places that will go ahead and do that, but it's a very, very um, good service. It's free. Students can go ahead and depending on when the tutoring sessions are, are open, you just walk in. Most of them are evening, but they can be all the way through the day when if the if the tutors are available. So that that's really good. But besides that, and I'm I'm gonna go ahead and put a plug in and a kind of a request of you guys since since you may be yeah, you're in high school and, and depending on what year you are, do yourself a favor. Learn how to study. I know a lot of you guys are bright, and you and you can get by in high school without really learning how to study. I can tell you in college, it won't work. You have to know how to study, and you have to know not only how to study, but how to retain that information. Because see, we go ahead and not only do we travel probably three times faster in courses than what you have in high school, but we expect you to learn that information because your next course is going to build on that information and and you got to you got to remember that so you know if you um, if you can by all means learn good study skills learn good study techniques um, don't rely on just memorizing and cramming before tests because that is the least um, that is the least useful way of studying that there is if you're not a good test taker you know Go ahead and talk to your guidance counselor and see if there's some help that they can go ahead and give you in that regard. We do, by the way, in our academic support area, we have um, people that can help you with test anxiety and time management skills and study skills because that's one of the things that I think that shocked my freshmen more than anything else is the fact that all of a sudden the techniques that worked for them in high school do not work in college. And I, on a personal note, I can say that my own two sons um, found that out too. So, you know, and even though I've been doing this for a number of years, they didn't want to listen to anything mom told them. But on the other hand, they did admit after mm, they probably figured it out for themselves that mom was right and they needed to learn how to study. So, um, you know, but that's really what it takes. So, you know, if, if you... You know, if you're a great if you're a great studier, super. But if you're a crammer, <laughs> do yourself a favor. Cramming crashes and burns, and <laughs> that's not what we want from our freshmen. We want our students to come in and be successful, and to stay here, and to eventually walk through the arch and graduate and go on for a um, productive career. So, and that's that is what we consider to be a, a success here at the University of Finley. So does anybody else have any other questions?
tell them a little more about the clubs and organizations associated with the program. Okay, well, okay. I'll, I'll let you go ahead and start okay. with the clubs that you are, yeah. and then I can fill in anything. Um, so we definitely have a pre-vet club that's very active on campus. It's a large club. How many people are pre-vet now? Probably about 100 100 and, 125. Yeah, right? it's a really big club, and they do really fun activities. Um, one of the things they usually do is the UF Rodeo, and um, so that, I think we team with Block, Block and Bridal Club, which is like the animal science club on campus. Mm -hmm. And then we also, Privet Club also brings in alumni that are um, currently at vet school or graduated from vet school and admissions counselors from vet schools. And another club that I'm personally in is Beta Beta Beta. It's the National Biological Honor Society, mm -hmm. and um, that's growing quite a bit now too. We probably have about 25 members, and we do. Um, last semester, we made terrariums. Students could come over to the Davis Street building and make little Christmas ornament terrariums. And um, we are univers the University of Finley is hosting the regional Tribeta conference in March, which is pretty exciting. And um, there's tons of clubs and organizations on campus. There's Student Government Association. Um, there's a lot of uh, religious organizations. There's Republicans and Democrats on campus organizations. <laughs> um, Habitat for Humanity. Yeah, we that, have a chapter. That's popular. Um, let's see. We have several honoraries that are really, really mm -hmm. active. As far as one is, uh, one of my favorites is Aristos Eclectos for juniors and seniors. I'm present. Yeah, and she's <laughs> the cat is president. She didn't even say that. But usually every year they have a contest um, between students and faculty, and it's it, it's a takeoff on um, are you smarter than a fifth grader? And this way, it's are you smarter than a faculty member? Oh, we're doing Finley Feud this year. Are you Finley Feud yeah. this year? So oh, this, year this would be good. So, so that that'll be good. We have teams. Um, there's four teams of five, and they can either be just faculty, just students, or they can be a mix of faculties and students. And they play against each other in like a family feud style game, and the students, like yeah, <laughs> and the students can win gift cards, and we're giving away like free sweatshirts. Um, so that, yeah, we do have a lot of pre vet people in that club too. But that that's a club that's nice because it attracts students from all different majors, not just pre vet or biology. Oh, yeah. And when you're in a pre vet bio major, you pretty much stuck with the same kids for every class for at least the last two years. Um, so it's nice to. I don't know if you want to say stuck, but they're there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's nice to get out to these other clubs and see what the students in other majors are doing and what they're like. Um, so that's that's why I like those interdisciplinary clubs a lot. And then intramurals on campus are really popular. We have um, indoor volleyball, beach volleyball, soccer. Ultimate Frisbee, Volleyball, there's tons of them, and they're really popular. Um, and then there's also some JV sports teams that you can play on, which are much more manageable um, time-wise when you're a biology major. Playing a varsity sport is pretty hard. but It can be done. It just requires the student yeah. to be really, really organized. As the director of the pre vet program, I have had, um, see, I've had women's softball, I've had football players, I've had basketball players, both men and women, um, have had soccer players. Soccer is probably the hardest one because you have a season that goes most of the school year and that's that's kind of tough. But I've had swimmers, I've had divers, so you know um, certainly that and then of course we have all the the music programs too oh, so yeah. that's that's really um, Popular on campus. I think you can actually get a little bit of a scholarship if you want to be in a marching band. Yes. Yeah. So I think we have another question. Yes. Um, Savannah is asking, do we have to have previous steer experience to be a part of the cattle show team? Also, are there any other livestock show teams? We don't have any other um, livestock show teams at this point. Um, we've always talked about um, going ahead and coming up with a livestock judging team. Um, and hopefully, um, as our animal science faculty grow, that's something that is going to go ahead and uh, um, take place too. As far as show experience, um, it would certainly be helpful if you did, um, because those kids are um, picked on 
basically their show experience mm -hmm. and because see they're showing at big shows. We're not yeah. showing at county fairs. We're showing at like they go um, to Denver, Colorado. Yeah, they, to the livestock expo and I mean these are huge shows that we come home with really nice <laughs> awards. So um, we certainly would encourage you to go ahead if you're interested in that Savannah to go ahead and to try out. You may be able to go ahead and find one of the kids who do show to go ahead and to you know teach you the ropes. So I'm not going to say that it's not possible because it's one thing I learned a long time ago that you just never say never. But you know certainly it would help if you had some some experience. But as of right now, that is our um, primary show team. But of course we have the for the equestrian areas we have the um, uh, both the Western and the English um, I H I S. IHSA. Thank you. I can say <laughs> IHSA um, equestrian teams, and I have known students on, for example, the Western team that really had never ridden a horse before that showed and actually did pretty well, yeah. like as far as like in walk trot. Um, so, you know, it it certainly can be done. So if you have an interest in in working with something like that, you know, we would go ahead and and in invite you to go ahead and to certainly try. And who knows, Savannah, maybe you want to go ahead and start a um, show team for, because we have a lot of sheep, we have a lot of goats, um, so, you know, who knows, we might want to go ahead and have a show team for that, and you might be the the instigating member, so, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and say, at a, at a school like Finlay, there's a lot of possibilities. So thanks for your question, Savannah. Well, why don't we take this to um, ask for any additional questions at this moment, and I'll let you guys wrap up. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, why students should choose the University of Finley for the Animal Science Pre-Vet program. I'll let you go first. Okay. So I, I'll <coughs> tell you, I guess, why I chose Finley. Um, I knew I wanted to be a vet from I don't know, middle school, high school age. And I had a good friend who graduated from here and went to Ohio State Vet School and is very successful now. Yanni Yannis. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so he told me all about the school. So I, I definitely I went and saw it in my junior year of high school and fell in love with it. And I just thought it was amazing um, that you could get so much hands-on experience. And again, coming from Cleveland, I had pretty much no large animal handling experience. And I liked that the biology and animal science programs are so cohesive and that it seems just to make a very well-rounded well student, not just a veterinarian, but it actually taught us how to be scientists, too. Um, so that's why I chose it. And I also liked that there was a small campus. It was far enough away from home that, you know, my parents were going to hover, but that I was on my own. Um, I thought the... The uh, scholarships available for academic scholarships were, I did not find those anywhere else. Um, and it's definitely helped me a lot pay for school. Um, and we just added a new academic scholarship. It's the Choose Ohio First Biology Scholarship. And so we also get, if you're a biology major, you can get a couple more thousand dollars a year for that, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, if, if I think students should choose Finley because our facilities are amazing. You're not going to find them anywhere else around the country. And our one-on-one -on -one time with professors, you're also not going to find at a bigger school like Ohio State. Um, I can't tell you why I started a thing because obviously I didn't go to school here. However, um, <clears throat> way back in 1986, I assisted my boss at the time um, when I and I was practicing um, to go ahead and to come up with the idea about a pre-vet program and he came up with the idea, we talked about it, I created most of the initial courses and then it went from there. And um, I've been associated with the university since full-time, since 1986 and I taught full-time and practiced and I, I've done a mixture of that um, throughout my entire career. Um, although I did a large animal and equine for the first um, eight years I was in practice. but I like Finley because of, number one, the opportunities that students get. Number two, how friendly the, the campus environment is. 
you know, it, it's really rare to go across campus and even if you don't know whoever it is, they you smile, they smile back, or they smile first. You know, it really doesn't matter. Um, people are people are very very nice, um, but not just faculty, it, it's staff, it's administrators, it's our housekeepers, it's our groundskeepers. You won't find a campus, number one. <clears throat> now obviously you don't want to look now because we have a lot of snow and we're supposed mm -hmm. to get six inches tonight so I don't even want to look at it. I don't even want to think about it. However, you know, during the summer you will not find a prettier campus than what we have. You know, and it's just it's just nice to come on campus because I know that my work is valued, um, my students um, I'm, I'm here for them and I, I do what I do for them and um, you know we've got great sports teams there, there we get great opportunities the symphony comes down from Toledo and, and faculty and staff and students get a chance to attend free um, there's just so many opportunities here at the University of Finley that I just I'll retire from here there's no doubt about it unless they're gonna kick me out but I doubt it but I'll, I'll retire from here because I am very proud to be a University of Finley faculty member. Well we'll go ahead and end the hangout here and you guys will be able to find this on YouTube at the University of Finley admissions channel so look for us there we'll also be sending this out to all of you via email so have a good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>